certificate. Just ask me that again. You know how, like, <clears throat> they've got, like, a, a like, millionaire matchmaker and Rich. all these, all these fucking, they got all these shows or websites about people dating and everybody's putting on their best face. Mm -hmm. And it's all these people that are successful. I'm wondering if there's a, if there's something in the idea of an at, well, either a dating site or even like a show about people who have just made a multiple poor life decisions finding love with like-minded individuals dud data dud <laughs> oh hey wait oh a minute. my god data dud let's start the game <laughs> data dud i kind of like that that's not a bad idea yeah. oh shit yeah the intro uh so data dud is our idea don't you steal it yeah yeah how do I skip this? I don't think you do. What is happening? What'd you do? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe restart it. Uh, you've, bro up. you've broken the matrix. I did. Oh. <laughs> okay. Although I, d I do have something to talk about that I don't think you're going to like. Wait, why? <laughs> it has to do with aliens. <laughs> Well, I, no, I mean, talk about it, <laughs> by all means. So I was, uh, I was listening to the latest Chris Jericho podcast, Talk is Jericho. Yes. Title of it was UFOs are real. Deal with it. And I'm like, OK, what is this all about? So <clears throat> he has this guy on. And this is one of those things where at first I'm like, oh, let's hear what this crackpot has to say. And then as I'm listening, I'm like, wait a minute. No, I remember this. So this guy claims <laughs> we can't get past. I'm going to tell no, no, the story no. while, we, while we're. Yeah, keep going. People have seen this. Yeah, we can't get past the intro right now. So we're just going to sit through it. Um, so the guy that he has on, just this normal guy. He's got a, he's got a career. He's got, he's, he has a YouTube channel about the Mandela effect. The whole yeah. Berenstein, Berenstein, Berenstein. Yeah. He had a YouTube channel just dedicated to that. And I guess because of that, he was contacted by. A government worker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is just so loud. <laughs> it is. Um, contacted by a government worker. Um, and he's not the only one. People, it, It's been people that have been contacted all around. Yes. Uh, about sp spreading information, like trickling it out about the truth about like UFOs being real and us having like been around them. Yeah. Because, and as he's des describing this, I'm like, Okay, so I can kind of, I can kind of see this as being like a thing that would happen, where the government has all this knowledge about like aliens or UFOs, whatever it is. Right. But as a society, all of that information at once would cause things to break down. Religion, uh, everything. Sure. It, like, it, there would there'd be too much. So what they're doing is they're slowly trickling out little bits of information. And the first thing he mentions, he's like, yeah. So one of the things that was Washington Post had this article it was i think three months ago mm -hmm. that just says ufos are real deal with it essentially it's like get get used to it wasn't that just an opinion piece no no it was it was something that was it was information filtered to them and they put it out so this was in april i believe but then he starts talking about all these things that so all this information that he himself dropped at the behest of whoever got in touch with him and i'm like wait yeah i remember that and the way he talked about it <clears throat> was like, it was a cool concept in that our reality is a hologram. <laughs> yeah, I found that so the thing, by the way, it's from their perspective section, which does mean it was written by somebody going, this is, this is what I think uh, based on these things. And it's also, so, and he's, he first thing he writes is it's not the same thing as an extraterrestrial. Life yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. That. So, I mean, I understand that UFOs oh, exist. Oh no, no, no. So the, now the thing is they were talking the, the way that he described it is that UFOs aren't interstellar travelers, right? Like when we see UFOs or we think of UFOs, we yeah. think that they've traveled this long distance. Oh, I mean, some people might. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> like the common conception or the common perception of UFOs is, Oh, aliens from another, galaxy traveled here in a flying spaceship right and the way he described it was like that they're not interstellar travelers and that we belong on different frequencies 
So they do exist in our space, essentially. But what they're doing is when they get here, they're essentially t they, they're turning the dial to a different frequency that we're on to kind of phase into our reality. And what we see is these little, like, these ships that they use. And I was like, that's the coolest. It's a great theory. It's the coolest idea. Yeah, that's yeah, my, I, I in, in the idea. I think, is I think cool, so sure. far, I think that's my favorite, like, alien theory that's All been right. out there. You know, we... Christine and I once saw a uh, UFO and so did I. Yeah. It, but it was, and it was one of those things where I was like, well, there's enough military bases around. Ma they're probably just flying. It's something true. Around. Yeah. What, we're, we're, it, we're near, uh, we're in New Jersey, which means we have the uh, McGuire air force base. So even yeah. in this area, we constantly uh, have, we uh, have military this was aircraft up north. all over. Yeah. This is up North in Fanwood, which isn't terribly close, but it was so high in the sky. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. It was, uh, Christine thought she saw a shooting star and she's like, Oh, look, but then we looked at it and we caught it and we were looking real close and it was like a little glowy orangish. So it looked like uh, if, uh, yeah, maybe we saw the same thing because uh, you're giving me that look. It was like a little orange. Dot. It was as big as any of the other stars around. Or we thought slow it, moving. No. Oh, OK. Thing. We almost thought we were like, oh, probably a satellite. Yeah, that was our first thought. But then it started moving. Like you ever Change see, direction. you ever see those weird looking creatures that are really deep in the ocean and they have that way they just sort of dart from place to place. Yes. It started going like zip. How long stop. ago was this? A few years. It was three or four years ago. So, but it would zip from place to place, and we were watching it for like an hour. Like holy shit! Like it would go over there, then it would zip over there, and it, there was no pattern to it. So to me, I was just like, it's probably just some satellite or so, like or some government. Well, it wouldn't be a satellite because so satellites. Or I should say, yeah. a satellite, not not a satellite. <clears throat> Not a satellite in that sense. I mean, it really means something put in orbit that somebody's manning and moving around. Well, even like, then, I don't think we have anything that's like controlled like that. And it that's wasn't in space. covering a whole lot of ground. So was, I saw something similar to that. Yeah. This isn't the the UFO that I saw, but I saw something similar to that. I think just last year mm -hmm. over the water. Like I looked across okay. street and I was like, yeah. "What the hell is this?" Yeah, little orange light doing the darting motions. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Well, I found out what it was. What was it? Because it started getting closer. <laughs> oh, shit. Somebody had a drone. I guess that. So the drones have, like, some of the drones will have uh, have bottom lights. If it's far enough away, it looks like a solid light. Honestly, that absolutely makes sense yes. now. That's what I'm thinking okay. yours was. Probably. Could be. Could be not. Um, but the one that I saw, <laughs> we're not even playing the game. <laughs> no, fuck it. Welcome the people... to the UFO podcast. Yeah, this, is, this is our UFO talk. Uh <laughs> For this, just this episode, yeah, I'll put a little, you know, I'll put it on the screen. Like, if you want to just skip to the gameplay, it's yeah, just the time go to this timestamp, screw it. Um, so the one that I saw, it was uh, so my ex girlfriend Lauren, mm -hmm. she was moving back to her parents' house, which is where our buddy Tuck lives in his neighborhood, right? I was in a moving truck with her brother, mm -hmm. who's a couple years older than us. And we stopped at the intersection where the 7-Eleven is. Okay. I know the one. Facing the ocean. I looked out and I see this orange ball. Like it was, it was a thick ball of light mm -hmm. slowly coming down. And I'm like, I could kind of judge the distance in that it was over the water. Mm -hmm. Up in the sky, like airplane height. Right. But still kind of close enough to have some kind of like size to it. And it's slowly falling. And I'm like, what is that? A flare? Because it, it, from that distance, it just looked like it, it looked like a like a like a hot, a hot light mm -hmm. slowly falling. Like it could have been a flare yes, that was shot yeah. up and it had that motion to it. That's yeah, that's similar. He that sees one. it. Mm -hmm. And we both stop, pull to the side of the road in this big moving truck. And then other cars start stopping. <laughs> and we get I out. I heard about this. We get out of the cars. A whole line of cars. We all get out and start watching this thing slowly falling, and then it stops. And then a second light splits out from it, <laughs> moves to the right, and then it stops. So there's two balls of light just sitting stationary, and then one disappears on the, the one that moved off to the side. It it like shuts off, and then it comes back. Uh huh. Shuts off, comes back. The one on the left starts to move to the left. The one on the right disappears, comes back, turns to red, and then shoots off. 
I think I remember this actually being reported. So like, we all stared at it and we're like, what the fuck did we just see? Yeah. Every single person standing there. I saw people posting on Facebook, too. And I'm like, yeah. I saw it, too. I saw, I that. saw it, That's too. That's why, because I have so many people in the area. I remember a lot of people talking about it. And then I think maybe it was even Jason's. They were like, they ran a story or something. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So this was right before I moved out of Jersey. This was 2010. Was that when I left? Yeah. 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 yeah 2010. Yeah, I think that was. It yeah. was. 2011, early 2011 is when I go to California. Mm -hmm. When I first get to California, I got caught in like a YouTube rabbit hole of just like random things. And then like a UFO video popped up. I'm like, oh, let's watch some UFO sighting videos. See, see if they look decent. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this compilation of it's not just like home shot stuff. It's UFO things that have made the news around the world. So it's news footage. One of them from, I believe, Argentina was yeah. the exact same thing that I saw, and I, I, I almost had like a panic attack. I wonder. I was, that, yeah, I wonder what that one. Don't is. know. That's. I, I mean, have no idea. It's probably an explanation was, that we'll just never get to hear. Yeah, this was. I mean, this was before the time of like drones being. Yeah, they, they weren't a big thing then. Yeah. So to, like, or at all, I think. Uh, yeah, seriously. For people using at home. Drones didn't come around till what, like six years ago, seven years ago. That so this seems a, this about was twenty. 2014, yeah. 2015, but when it became like you could get Consumer. a good one for home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we just got one. We're going to start shooting stuff with that soon. I know. Mm, that's so going to be fun. About that thing. We were actually going to test it today, but it's almost 100 degrees again. Didn't want to. And windy as hell. Yeah, that didn't help. So, welcome to Dust, everybody. It's our second day recording this. And if you've ever seen a UFO, tell us all about it in the yes, comments. That's a good point. Uh, your I, UFOs. I, just, I love that kind of stuff. Uh, your UFO sightings, let us know. I've always been more the skeptic as far as aliens go, but UFOs, yeah, I get it. It's yeah. a thing. Um, it's one of those things where, like, mathematically, it's like, it, they're out there. They, there has to be yeah, but, life somewhere in the universe. And Whether it's one or not of those it's things a, where they're so far away, it's like, exactly. we'll never run into each other is yeah. more likely. The, 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 yeah, idea probably that, something. the idea that there's a little green alien and a That's flying what I saucer mean, like, that yeah. comes over, highly doubtful. The fact that, but if you think about how almost infinite the universe is. Right. Oh, shit. The no playing a sheer numbers game. There's got to be like at least one life form out there that has some kind of travel capabilities beyond Could. what or we, but they existed a can... billion years ago and then they died out and they still aren't there. That's the problem with it's space true. and time being so massive. I know. Um. All right. I'm just pulling up the walkthrough because I remember how much of a slog this could be. <laughs> Eh, forget the game. Let's just talk UFOs. No, I'm done talking UFOs. No, 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 no. This is good. This is good shit. This is what the kids come no, I mean, for. I, us. But I'm also like I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, you know me with this stuff. I'm I like, know. Nah. That's exactly when I first brought it up. I was like, all right, now nah, it, you know, this is gonna be I, your cup you know of tea. what it is. I don't, I don't mind talking with you because you're a reasonable person. It's once I start yeah. talking to people who, who are and so honestly, if you believe that it could be aliens, I'm not even talking that I'm talking to people that go the way conspiracy beyond theorists, that the ones that are this. like, no, they landed in Roswell. This is this. That is that. And also these big conspiracies. Like I can't, I just can't deal. So I was actually thinking, so the one that I was listening to said that, uh, they came into our, they've always been here. Mm hmm. But we weren't aware of them until World War II. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? That that would make sense to me. Because what would make them feel like they need... If they were, if they were a, like a kind species. If they were here just like observing and just being like, you know what? We're just checking up on, on humans. What would be the one thing that would make them go like, all right, we got to say something, right? Atomic bomb. Yeah. Us being able to split an atom would make them go like, we should... Just say it's something, right? Say, they, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we haven't done it since. I mean, there there've been testings, but nothing to well, that we haven't scale. Done well, to be fair, we haven't done it since because, like, the ramifications of it have kept people. From, what? What? Oh no, 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 no! I'm just saying, like, from this standpoint, but, it could have. We we could have just kept going with it. How do we know what well, they were tested. thinking? We've tested, sure. We have tested, yeah. but I'm saying, like, as far as really using bombing them, an entire like it's that bombing whole mutually assured destruction. It's it's it can't be if anybody does it, and I could see it <laughs> happening in this in this uh, uh, in in our current timeline. <laughs> I could see it happening. It could, uh, but it would just be too much of a disaster and kill everybody long term. I was reading; they said if too many went off in one area, and it's not even that many. 
but if if enough were launched at the same time it could just burn the ozone and oh, we'd all just I'm get roasted surprised. in yeah. uv rays and i'm like oh i don't want that <laughs> oh i say i i don't want to be there for a new for for an explosion of yeah. course but i also want my ozone layer if i'm not there it's true i don't want to get burned slowly to i death. don't like heat to begin with we're gonna have i to- have trouble outside right now oh my god do you think people would have to slather themselves in there, mud like you'd actually have to get into a tub full of of uh sunblock no i think it would because it's uv rays just to reflect uv rays off yourself everywhere you go no it'd be so it, it would be so intense that probably like, shit would disintegrate yeah. <laughs> like i wonder what that would feel like not to mention i so i don't know <laughs> uv doesn't, rays doesn't our ozone i don't know the science behind this but doesn't our ozone also reflect radiation yeah, I'm pretty sure it protects or something. That, there's a layer there that pre- I'm sure somebody in the comments could be like, oh, it's this. Yeah, uh, there is a layer there, I believe, that does protect from radiation. Yeah. So, God, it would just be bad. Please don't use nukes. That's my that's if we it have would, one message literally, from today. I, I think the only way to go, like the only way you'd be safe from that is burrowing about 100 miles under the surface into a bunker. They have those. So really, the rich people no, no, no. have already. They, yeah, they have those. Yeah, I'm saying. We don't have We'd those. be done. We'd be done. <laughs> Shit, we got to get rich so we can get in the underground bunker. What was that, what was that movie where they had the Ark? Uh, uh, the big boat that for when the everything flooded. Not not Noah's Ark, but like. I know what you're talking about. And I don't. I, I know that there was a movie that had it. And I, I don't remember offhand. It was one of those. It was a disaster movie just recently. Shit. Oh, what was that a movie? Movie that has arc. Oh my god! Um, by the way, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just make this its own thing. I'll put a little bit message on screen that says we we started to record dust. Yeah, an unlisted this is just a video. Pod- this is a, no, not even unlisted. I'll oh. just put it up as this is sort of a uh, yeah. impromptu podcast. Um, movie that had it's actually a cool movie too. Like for arc. a disaster movie, it was it was it was not bad. Uh, was and it, it, it was, was like, John Cusack in it. I don't know. It was a guy and his daughter getting to this arc thing that was in Switzerland. Is that 2012? Yes. Because I looked it up. I'm like, yeah, wait a Is minute. Is that John Cusack? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was the star. Yeah. 20. John, 2012 was one of those movies. I remember. Like, it wasn't bad. I saw it and went, I really enjoyed yeah. that. For, I for I a disaster movie gonna. like that, it was like, was, anybody else realize that this was kind of good? Yeah, it was fun. And, uh, and they had the they had the big giant like industrial arc thing. It, it was you know, I, it looked honestly, like the ship from Wally that they all go on. I forgot that plot point until you mentioned it. I'm like, yeah, that does sound. I weird. forgot it until I said it. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot like a lot of the detail. Most of what I remember is just what was in the trailer. Him taking that plane off. Yeah, in the most ridiculous of circumstances, but it was fun. Was that on the roof of something? No, he was on a. It was like the whole Earth was. Oh, like, with the tornadoes. Away. Wasn't it him taking a plane no, off? No, it, it was everything was crumbling around oh right right, right. like the the runway was starting to fall and of course one goofy guy's like hang on a minute let's (laughs) like they made a they made a silly situation as the world is just being destroyed around him um how can we never get a sequel to that why couldn't we get 2013 i think it uh i think it didn't do very well for what it was they tend to not know it's a shame uh all thanks to the core yeah i like the core I still never watched it. I never. I, what? Yeah. You didn't watch the core. You and didn't I watch remember Armageddon inverted. Yeah. That's really all the movie is. I know. And Almost I remember you telling deep. me that I needed to because some of it was so batshit crazy. It was that I was like that. And Stanley Tucci was just amazing in it. He was. Everybody was. D, DJ Qualls was actually really good in it. Um, yeah. who, who else was there? Aaron Eckhart was great. Uh, Hillary Swank was good. It yeah, was the it cast had, for that. It's so weird that these disaster movies get the casts that they do. Oh, Bruce, uh, something with the Greenwood. Bruce Greenwood. Uh, he's the one that was tied to the bed in that Stephen King movie. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. The president uh, from uh, National Security. Yeah, or oh, National and, Treasure. And in the Not Star National Trek Security. reboot, he was the captain, yeah, Pike. Uh, Pike. So uh, there's a great scene in it. I loved it because they're going toward the people who don't know the core. The idea is that the core of the earth has stopped spinning and it's causing all kinds of issues. So they have to go into the earth's core, drop a bomb essentially to, to restart it. Yeah. To reignite the core. Yeah. Uh, and on the way down though, they get caught. They like, they, they don't know what to expect and they wind up in this giant like crystal cave, which is really kind of cool. Cause most of the, 
most of the movie is done in, in as realistic a way, or like a realistic presentation of how this would all go down. Mm. So to see like this like fantastical like crystal thing that probably would exist in there, there's a they stop there essentially because they have problems with the ship and they have to they have to fix it. Uh, they have these special suits so that they can withstand the heat. And Bruce Greenwood walks outside in his suit and just like walks on the crystals and just looking around like wow. And then a fucking crazy like crystal storm sort of starts and one just goes real quick through him and you just see this hole appear and he's just like and he drops dead and then they all have to panic because crystals are now raining on them and they have to get the fuck (laughs) back into their shit it's it's it was such a cool idea to me so to tie it back to the beginning that you mentioned crystals so the guy that chris jericho was interviewing oh god so let's say all right okay he, he talked about these things that have dropped in the news or that information that he's put out um, that's been given to him. He did say the next thing that's going to drop. So if this okay. if this is if there's news about this, if 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 scientists are like, hey, we found this thing, then it adds some legitimacy to what he's saying. He said that the next bit of information that is going to drop, uh, I think, within the next couple months is that they're going to find a crystal structure. Um, under the under in, uh, the ocean's floor, something that we haven't seen, which is possible that we'd find things that we haven't found in the ocean before, because we just found fresh water running along the entire coast they, yeah. two days ago. They found pockets of it, but they just really? found yeah, they just found that there are m- hundreds of miles. They said it could fill thousands of Olympic sized swimming pools. The amount of fresh water they just found under the ocean, and they're and they're they're. I've always thought the idea it. of that maybe there's a layer somewhere underground where some other kind of life lives. Which could, yeah. People have done movies. I mean, there's like Mole Men movies uh, from the, the 50s. Meg. Was it? The Meg. Right. But I mean, like, life. Like, a sus- like not The Meg. I- oh, you mean, sus- a, a, like you mean, intelli- you mean a, a relatively comp- intelligent life. Oh, like, oh, land oh Mole Men. Land. Like, yeah. even... I mean, that's obviously science fiction, probably. But I mean, what was more that like, comedy show? More, like bugs and snakes and other things could be down there. Um, Solve the Moment! Yes, yeah, Solve, Solve the, the Moment! moment. God damn! People, you, uh, if you have not watched Solve the Moment, it was an adult swim thing, so they probably oh, have. No! Oh, no! no it's, it's, <laughs> oh, no! It's him just pretending to climb in front of a green screen, oh like picking God, his feet I up, about solve the and his moment. body slowly moving up this wall, and then it just falls in the worst. Somebody clearly just dragging him down, <laughs> and he just goes, "Oh no! Oh no!" <laughs> solve the moment, everybody! Holy shit! Adult we gotta swim. try to find that. Adult Swim probably has the whole series because it was on there. I would imagine if, so. if not, I'm sure it's somewhere. Look on YouTube. Oh, I shit. never finished that series because it, it got pretty out there but yeah the the pilot i have what but it got so out there that after a while i lost track of what was going on i watched on. the whole thing and it's glorious the pilot is one of the best things i've ever seen yeah oh no but, <laughs> but it's after it's, the, uh, after the, the captain dies and he's just like wait a minute who is that it's me sir it's, it's saul saul malone <laughs> is that his name saul malone i think so and and he's just like malone no, <laughs> he's just this everyday schlub that yeah. happens to be the. He's basically Roger Wilco from when we did Space Quest, where he's the uh, the yeah. janitor for the ship. Yes, and he's the only one who survives this uh, this disaster at the center of the Earth. But it's also worth if you if you've never seen that um, Johnny Tambourine. Check that out. Remember, yes, he's the he, same guy who plays Saul plays Johnny Tambourine, this very airheaded like musician. But uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. And also Gerhard Ranke's Wanderlust yes. from Comedy Central. One of the Same best. guy. It's an actor named Josh. Ooh, I'll comedian. He's a comedian named Josh something, but he plays Gerhard Ranke and Solve the Moment. Watch every. There's only six episodes of, yeah. of both. Uh, I, no, no, no. Solve the Moment was like 20. Saul was like, it was yeah. Saul, I think, was 13. Uh, maybe it was 20. It, it was something like that. Josh Gardner. That's Josh Gardner, name. yeah. But he, yeah, he played that character so good. It was like a, a mockumentary travel show. Gerhard Reinke and every episode it has he made went to a different gut laugh place. more than most things. Uh, Pepe Lucho! Pepe Lucho! <laughs> yeah, when he, goes to, he goes to monkey. South America. And there's a scene where they're, uh, where they're looking at these, like, I think they were capuchin monkeys. Um, 
but he's playing with this little monkey and then it they cut it to where it looks like the monkey goes nuts and the monkey's name is Pepe Lucho and you hear the the natives screaming hey, Pepe Lucho and, <laughs> and every, the monkey yeah. starts attacking everybody and the camera just starts cutting real quick zooming all around like a panic. horror movie yeah what is his name Pepe Lucho yeah. Pepe Lucho <laughs> And then it just cuts to the next scene like it's nothing. And then at the end of the episode, out of nowhere, Pepe Lucho shows yeah. up and attacks They're again. They're just talking. They're just talking about something, and all of a sudden, someone goes, and Pepe the, Lucho! And the best part is the camera falls, goes black, and then you hear a gun go off, and Gerhard goes, Oh my God, they shot him! They shot him! <laughs> oh my God, he's back! It's Pepe Lucho! He's out there! <laughs> I remember your dad used to watch that over and over again. I got him. Oh on no! That. What was it? The, uh, he goes. Does he see some tribe and the guy who's making the like whatever Boom. in the pot? Boom! He's just throwing stuff in there. They they did a little take on uh, Emerald Lagasse. They ha they made it look like a cooking show, but it was with yeah. this like this native tribe. So that's this uh, it's this tri it's like the tribe's leader or like the shaman in a headdress cooking grubs. Yeah. Now that's like some that. good grub. Yeah. <laughs> And then he, uh, as he would throw spices in, he'd just go, boom. It's like, uh, it, it would be, it was a little take on Emerald Lagasse doing the bam, now that's his stuff. Yeah. So it's Gerhard narrating it, and he goes, here comes the chef's secret uh, uh, specialty. And the, and the chef just goes, boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And he just puts a little water on it. Your dad used to play that show. I thought it was so good. I got, I'm due to rewatch that. It's a real quick watch. It's only six half hour episodes. It's a real shame that it didn't keep going. Oh, Although he did so play good. that character a few times. He he was on Kimmel years yeah. ago. He was like a writer and a performer on mm. there. I wonder what he's doing now. Yeah, should look it up. He needs a new show already. It's been too long. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we basically recorded a little mini podcast. We were going to start Dust. It turned into a podcast. <laughs> uh, it was a 30 minute but not even 25 uh, 20 almost minutes. but that's fine you know we'll just put this up as a second upload one day yeah. it's like here's a bonus yeah honestly but i'm putting this up you guys probably don't even know what dust is yet because i'm i don't think it's i'm true. just gonna i'm not gonna wait it's a pre-show show yeah pre this is this this game's coming late august early september i don't know yeah. but uh oh this is a preview this is exactly what this uh this game our, is about that's what we'll do it's just this real scatter shot <laughs> us <laughs> talking about various movies and tv uh all right well thanks for watching tell us all your oh, ufo well, stories well yeah yeah ooh, ooh. so so if if in the next couple months oh a crystal thing if if they if we get people if their reports been like oh yeah so so undersea uh divers found a crystal structure there's something to that sure if that happens then maybe he's got some info that's I don't what think that's it's gonna that's happen. where i'm at i don't think it's gonna happen i don't see i don't i don't think it's not i don't think it is I'm I'm right should in the middle. Him, should make him president for life if that happens. Just like the guy who predicted the earthquakes in Escape from L.A. He was like, "It's gonna get, it's gonna get, it's gonna, L.A. is gonna be its own island removed from the U.S." And when he was proven right, they were like, "You're president for life." Yeah, we should do that with this guy. Who was that? That was a. Uh, wasn't that a? Uh, it was Uncle Ben from Spider Man. Could yeah, it sounds sounds right. Yeah, whoever that actor was. Oh God damn it guy from 13th child remember that movie the jersey devil movie that our friend chris gave to me because he didn't want it oh no i never saw it i know you had it but i never watched you it never watched no do we gotta I watch the 13th it. child uh made my dad watch it and even my dad was like my dad watches the worst shit in the world yeah because he just likes to just take in movies he does he doesn't care what it is i mean he'll bitch about movies but he'll also watch some of the lowest budget shit you can imagine yeah even my dad was like, what the fuck was that? We, we got to watch it then. It's bad. Cliff child. Robertson. Cliff Robertson. Okay. Cliff Robertson. He was the president. All right. Yeah. 
I uh, yeah, I want to watch this Thirteen Child now. I want to watch uh, Escape from L.A. Yeah, me too. Always. Yeah, it's been Love a that movie. Uh, all right. Everybody, uh, thanks for listening. I guess every, I guess I don't know when the next time we'll record one of these is. Whenever this starts to happen. Yeah. Whenever uh, whenever there's UFO talk, uh, y- you're you're gonna hear it for, hear first. Unless the you fuck hear was it. that. This is my controller telling me it's low on battery. Oh on the, god, on the I heard switch. that beep. I was like, did something go wrong with the nah, recording? My Nintendo Switch is uh, yelling at me. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody listening. This is listening. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you. Enjoy uh, enjoy living in the Matrix. Go watch, that's where we're all at. Go watch something else on this channel. What else are you going to do? You want to hear something that will probably make you angry? Right now? So he brought up The Secret, too. The Secret? So The Secret. <laughs> Sorry, I know quick, The Secret. Real quick. All right. So The Secret, for those of you who don't know, is, is this is a book about the whole concept is willing things into existence, essentially. Yeah. Wanting, basically wishing for something really hard and then you get it and so, having an attitude that you're going to get it no matter so what. So he said that under this model that he's talking about, it's not far off because of the fact that we live essentially in this this hologram that's so complex that we couldn't possibly like perceive it. Right. And that. The man. This is where I think why why he was contacted because he talked about the Mandela effect. That's that's all this yeah. guy does. He he had, he was interested in the Mandela effect. Started a YouTube channel. That's how it was. Mm-hmm. He wasn't like a conspiracy nut or anything. He's just like I'm very interested in the subject of the Mandela effect. The idea that the Mandela effect could possibly be real. Well, not not the effect, but the fact that Baron Stain bears versus Baron Steen bears that it could have been Baron Steen bears and over the course of time um, had been willed out of exit. Like the, the, the matrix shifted essentially. And that um, Ed McMahon never having appeared in a commercial for publishers clearinghouse where I remember. Yeah. It sounds like something, but I remember seeing commercials, but apparently he never was. So things like that, are called the Mandela effect yeah, where we yeah. remember this one thing, but it turns out it was not that at all. Right. And where we're just misremembering, but it might be that we're not misremembering. It's that reality itself has just slightly bent, but it hasn't because it's still the same as it ever was. Or is it? No, he wasn't. If he wasn't in it, he wasn't in it. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just saying under his under his model under this whole idea of the the whole hologram thing. That's that's the Mandela effect. Shift in the matrix. He did deliver the checks. He did. That's that was so I heard somebody talk about this. I was like, no, I just maybe he didn't do the commercials, but he was still in a part like involved just, with the yeah, company. That was one that that's stuff. one where I read people saying that that had never happened. I'm like, no, that has to have. Wait a minute, because I'm looking at it. Wait. No, don't tell me he didn't. Hang on. Good. Russ. Hang on. Are we in a hologram? <laughs> Saying you may have already won one million dollars. Yeah, his picture was on it. Or something to that effect. Most people would discard them, thinking it wasn't real. But most people seem to remember commercials with Ed McMahon delivering a big yeah. check for one million dollars to round up. They have an image here of him clearing house, holding a big check. Well, apparently, it was actually American Family Publishers. That oh. For. And apparently, he never delivered the big checks himself, even in commercials. I've never even heard of the American Family Publishers. Wait, so you're saying it's just another company name that sounded similar and people just remember the wrong company? Which I think that's the Mandela effect. That is, but that's, that's not as strong. It's, so it's, that's it's, not as strong a Mandela effect. That's not like... Uh, uh, the Berenstein Bears one is in, really weird. That's not like the genie movie with Sinbad, where that's a big one for people. Uh, for people, but that was one where I, even when I heard about that, I was like, no, he wasn't a genie movie, just because I know movies. Yeah, I, I was like, that sounds familiar. No, but, but I, that was about but it. I, in my head, I kind of worked it out. Like I was like, oh, people probably thinking of Kazam. Right. And and then did you see the explanation of that whole thing? Yeah. The fact that Sinbad had done a TV spot mm-hmm. dressed as the dressed as a, a genie, essentially. For, that makes sense. For Sinbad in the Seven Seas. Right. The Voyage of the Seven Seas. They were doing the Harryhausen Festival and they had Sinbad come on and do it. And that was why people remember seeing him dressed as a genie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Let me just keep going with this. I don't know.
It's the Mandela effect. We're waiting for uh, we're, we're <laughs> waiting for my friend Jim because we're gonna test out shooting with our new camera. Yeah, so we're gonna start doing video, more video stuff for the channel. You might all those people have been wanting face reveals, even though we've done it countless times. In fact, this whole channel early on we did it a lot. That that's all it was. There was. T- our faces. We did short films. Oh, I eat that. Even. Oh, but I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. The like, early video the early Chad and Russ uh, play video yeah, games. Yeah, we'd have those little cut ins. Yeah, those were fun. They were, but it just became too much of a hassle. And we didn't how really much have any good ideas. Doing. Nothing. Po- we only we never forced any of those. those last were always... time I did it was when I got when we got the anamorphic lens for the camera. Did it during Shenmue two. Oh yeah, yeah. It was the last time. Yeah, but we never forced it. It was always like a, a like a when we'd be we'd be it would be in the moment. We'd be like, eh, that'd be funny. That's all it was. Yeah, we just have we haven't been creative yeah no we're gonna try uh for the uh we're, we're gonna try and do some video stuff next year we hope to do start doing a lot more yes that's re- really right now it's just kind of getting used to shooting again and, and learning the new camera and stuff and learning other ourselves equipment. yeah yeah we got to do that i haven't acted in a while no well i mean and I, it was my job for a while but yeah and i'm gonna i'm gonna minimize how much i'm on the camera but what if i constantly am off camera for a lot of stuff you just see my hands going like this and motion. You become our like Vern? Fun. Yeah, I'm Vern. Know what I mean, Russ? You know how much I thought it would be fun? <laughs> what we should do. What we should do is write <clears throat> an earnest movie. And then just change the name of the character. Change the name of the character and have you play him. I think it would be a lot of fun to do. Just something. I don't know if I could pull shit. off. Ah, I mean, you could. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be an impression of Ernest. No, but I mean, like that that energy. I don't know if I could pull off that. Like, I think maybe you could. I could try. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, OK, good. Never mind. I wonder how many people watching actually even know who Ernest is. You know what sucks? Because obviously Ernest movies were OK. Ernest <clears throat> was a character from commercials in the 80s, played by Jim Varney, who they eventually uh, he had a TV show mm-hmm. uh, where he did sketches and played a lot of different characters. And then eventually he got a movie with Ernest Goes to Camp. And then he did a series of pretty successful movies until About they, four or five successful there was movies. Camp, then Jail, which is my favorite. My favorite, uh, too. Christmas. Then, Christmas. It was Scared my second stupid. favorite, actually. Scared Stupid. And then Back to oh, School. No, was, no, no. Or, Before that, he did one called Ernest Rides Again. Yes, that was, that the, was the last so, theatrical. So that was the one, one that, that had like they had a big terribly. push for it. Yeah, because scared stupid did well it, it, was, it was, was a big, big movie yeah um as far as rides I again i remember the commercial showing him on the cannon yeah and he and, gets the fish hook in his yeah. mouth and it yanks him off so I that, that was, was like hilarious. their big selling point was he rides a cannon and gets yanked off by a fish hook <laughs> it was so funny and surprisingly people <laughs> didn't flock to the theaters it's really a shame um well he it started getting a a reputation as being very lowbrow entertainment it was yeah and it was, but like nowadays, I think there's more of an appreciation for that kind of style. I think the one after that, I want to say, was the basketball one, where Slam he got dunk the, Ernest, where he got the shoes, yeah, and all of a sudden that's he, where he it had started. Game. It started getting kind of car- too cartoony. I think there were only one or two more after that. Well, there was that, there was Army, and there was Africa. Yeah, and I, think I think those think are the it. last ones. A school. <laughs> so well, I was, think this. I think the basketball one. I think that was the school one. I think I'm. Or was no, there a no, specifically? Slam dunk it was Slam Dunk Ernest because I remember that was the first straight to video one because their big push yes. was like, OK, it's not in theaters anymore, but Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's in it. Yeah. And uh, then I think came school. Ernest goes to school. Africa, then, I think, was last. Yeah. Because then yeah, it was Ernest in the army and then Ernest goes to yes. Africa. And it got really overly cartoony. They had the female Ernest. That basically they started come to in. feel like direct to video movies. Where, I mean, they always had like that kind of feel, but there was always the, well, the sense that like they the could have been in felt a like real movies. Yes. Like for sure. Like camp was Christmas and yeah. camp were and jail and jail. Jail. Jail is where it started to feel a little bit more direct to video ish. Still the best movie. Oh, yeah. But it but you could tell that like it, it didn't. The production value. Yes. Felt like it was scaled back just a bit. Mm hmm. Scared Stupid, same thing, where it's like they had some big set pieces and stuff, but it still felt like they took a little bit more money away. Yeah, And then it right. was just like all direct-to-video quality. Yeah. So now what I've always thought about that is that Jim Varney, unfortunately, passed away. Yeah. Uh, lung cancer. He One thing I, I like, a story I like about him is that he, because he smoked cigars like crazy. Like it was mm-hmm. something he did constantly, but he made sure he was never... Like nobody ever got a picture or video of him doing it because he didn't want kids to see him doing that. Mm-hmm. He knew kids love the series. 
He was a good guy, apparently. I wish he had lived because if he was still alive at this point, people would probably be like, there needs to be a new Ernest movie. And I bet somebody yeah. like Judd Apatow or someone like they did for Pee Wee like, yep. would have gone to Netflix and been like, give us some money. We'll make a new Ernest movie. Or we'd have a Netflix series, a six episode oh run. Oh, my God. Let's, a six oh. episode run of Ernest at home with Vern. It'd be a reboot be of the original. Because he'd be old by now. Yeah. Like he was old then. He'd be old like by now. Like maybe maybe he's got because he did have. He'd be in his late 60s. He I did think? have a girlfriend. Maybe he had a kid. Who could, God, who could pick up the mantle of Ernest? That's so specific uh, to him that it would have to be somebody who wasn't trying to be Ernest, who's basically a new character. Ernest Jr. Know. Oh, How old are we talking? Are we talking like 20. teens or are we talking? Okay, Let's so young adult. Say 20. Or, 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 okay. Fuck. Because I'm thinking how long it's been since the last movie. It's been about a little over 20 years. Because I'm pretty sure the last one was in like 97, 98. So let's say he had the kid around that time. So the kid's like 20, 21. But how do you... How John do... Cena. <laughs> have you seen those pictures? He would make a... So people have started putting Shit, pictures... Right. People have started putting pictures of Jim Varney next to John Cena. And John Cena is starting to look like Jim Varney. You're right. He looks oh like God. he could be the son of Jim Varney. So you play against type... Son's totally different than the father. What if what if they just reboot but it? But then make starts him... finding out that he is more like his dad than he wants to believe. Oh my god. Did we just fucking write a an earnest movie with John Cena? Holy shit. Oh my god. I'm sorry. He's so he's like a cool guy his whole life, but as he's getting fucking older, ripped he and... starts becoming more like his dad. And and there you've got your your angle, the idea that as you become older, you start to become more like your parents. Yep. Fuck. Holy shit. God damn it! Who do we call? John Cena. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, it's the 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 number of people we know in the business is 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 uh, it's dwindling. I don't. I don't think we know anybody that's got any pull anymore. We just have to write it and send it. We gotta like, try to shop a script. John, <laughs> we need you to read our. Script. We can just do a treatment. We could do a like a one or two page treatment, and then. I feel I also feel like that's the type of thing that John Cena would be like, yeah, of course I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of getting a studio to be like, this isn't the worst idea we've ever heard. Yeah. So let's throw a couple bucks at it. Wouldn't need to be a huge budget. He would look so good in that hat and the vest. He It would look so right. I know. Ah. <sighs> uh. Hold on. Let me let me at least I'm gonna pull up the picture. <laughs> okay. Send it to me too, just so I can put yeah. it on screen while we talk John, about this. Cena Jim Barney. God, that's if you if you ever want What was funny is your face when I first said it, you were like, What? And the realization <laughs> I wish I could have gotten when, uh, I, I wish thinking, I could have captured your face because you just went from this. I was still to, thinking like 20 year old where I'm like, ah, oh, that would be I ridiculous. Know. And then I'm like, wait the way a minute. Your I got face it. Just dropped though. Cause you, you had this look of disgust on your face and you just went, my sudden, God, sudden realization <laughs> that it's brilliant. Wow. Yeah. I'm looking at, yeah. Take a screenshot of that. Send it to me. I'll, I'll put it up on screen. Ernest was a delight. He, uh, he's, I he, mean, he's one of the favorites from our childhood. I think people now have better senses of humor who could look at that and go, not just be like, oh, it's humor for dumb people. You go look at it and go, hey, it's it's just fun and goofy. Oh, it's a good time. Don't pay attention to what I just sent you. Okay. The, the, uh, no, look at that. What'd you send me? No, I accidentally sent you the link to that guitar pedal, but I sent <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, uh, you should especially, I, I recommend Camp, Camp Jail Christmas. Watch this. And, stupid. Oh, and Scared Stupid. stupid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the first four. Scared stupid, it definitely started getting scared very stupid cartoony, is but it's silly, worked. but it's also really fun. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's got Eartha Kit. Sure. Eartha Kit is awesome in that movie. She was very good. And it has Miak in it, which is one of my favorite. Bulgarian Miak. I bet you th thought I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find, find it this time of year. Miak. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I want New Ernest so bad. Oh. Hey, he grabs or Hey, Rimshot. Where'd he go, Rimshot? Where'd he go? Oh. Chuck Bobby! Chuck Bobby! Chuck Bobby! <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> I, I remember <laughs> us watching that movie. It was probably like 10. It's probably like a little before you went to California. Yeah. I remember us watching that movie and we we didn't realize it when we were younger. And when we watched it again and, and we came to the sudden realization that the entire movie was shot at a very high shutter speed. Yes. We and after a while we we're like, what was the movie always like this? Because the whole the whole movie has a high shutter speed, like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, that effect where it makes everything look really fast yes. and it the whole movie, really weird. It's something you normally do for intense action stuff. So to see it throughout an entire comedy, which does have its intense scenes. But for the in- every shot of the movie was really strange and something I'd kind of like to try. It just took day. me forever to get this image. Which one? It wouldn't download. So I had to fucking screenshot and crop it. Ugh. You know what I need to learn? Uh, deep faking, which not to do anything bad to people. I don't think we can. So the amount of computer processing that goes into it from what I've seen is like crazy. And and it's it takes like like dozens of hours. I don't know. People are doing it now. Like, really? Yeah. People are starting to do it. Now, some people are using it in bad ways. And, well, you've and also got a really good computer. I do. I do. But what I, I think, I think it's become more possible now. I would love to see somebody deep fake John Cena's face onto old Ernestine's. And I personally would like to be the one to do it. So <laughs> I, uh, I got, I've been wanting to learn it just because it would be funny if we did a video and we wanted it to be like, have one of us play a celebrity. And just be like, hey, uh, I'm going to play Tom Cruise. And then I just put Tom Cruise's face on my face. Corridor like, Digital did it. I know. Oh, okay. But I saw them do it. I'm like, that would be great yeah. for us to have, like, just as a goof to be able to do if we ever needed to. Or if we ever needed to. I would to love put, to like, try your- to do the fucking the John Candy, Steve Martin scene. Like, act it out uh, from tra- Plain Strains Automobiles. Like, gah, gah, gah. I would love to try to just do that scene. Okay. And then deep fake John Candy's face onto me. And just see what see what happens. Oh, that would be fun. I think I th- I just think it would be fun to have another thing that I can do like yeah. that. Yeah, because I've seen some very convincing ones. I mean, it's, I I'm, I'm, I'd imagine it's just a program that they're all probably very open about. I, I think you have to. It takes some learning, but it can I'm be, sure you know, it does. Uh, if it could be done in After Effects, though, I'd love to give it a year. There's going to be an app on the phone. Mm-hmm. That somebody's gonna <laughs> yes somebody's gonna That'll, open source uh, the, uh, it's gonna become an open source thing somebody's oh gonna boy. make an app and then reality as we know it will break down because <laughs> no, nobody will be able to trust anything anymore nope it might be a good thing. i mean we're already yeah that's true it might be a good thing for everybody to realize i can't trust anything it'd be the one thing that makes people finally just give up on the internet yeah, like, yeah we're, done. We're, yeah. You know, it, it's occurred to me that every generation comes along and eventually they find something major about the generation before that they're like, that's stupid. We're going to do the opposite. Yeah. Eventually, there has to be a generation, whether it's the next one after Z or the next one after that, that's going to be like, this staying inside on the internet thing's stupid. I'm going to go outside. It's retro. And parents are going to be like, you can't go outside. You'll get kidnapped. And they'll be like, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's that's gonna how they're like, going to say gonna go That's how they're going to talk. And play handball with my friends. Yeah. Peace out, mom and dad. I'm going to walk <laughs> through the woods aimlessly with my two best friends. And you're not going to know where we are because I'm leaving my phone at home. I'm going to go set this alleyway on fire because why not? <laughs> I'm yeah, going to go. Did I did that. <laughs> I, I, you know, as, as we start slipping, I'm going to go find out where the bad kids hang out and we're going to watch them light some rubber cement on fire. But then the bottle's going to explode. And we're all going to run like we think we're in trouble. That happened with me. Yeah. God, that was crazy. I, I was 11 years old. We're walking through the woods. We see some of the bad kids and they're lighting rubber cement on fire in the road. They think it's hilarious. Until it, the fire travels <laughs> up, the spray of rubber cement explodes yeah. in the kid's hand. Fire shoots everywhere. For whatever reason, we all thought, we're going to jail. And we ran so through the woods. Ain't, I didn't know where we were going. I had something similar. Okay. So you know the whole concept of putting dog shit in a yeah. paper bag? And like, Somebody has to stomp it. So, so they get dog shit on their shoe. I had a friend in sixth grade who was a bad influence. He was my best friend. Oh. And I would I would go and spend the night at his house, and we would get into fucking. He, he, he lived with his grandmother and his deaf aunt, and they didn't really pay attention to us, so we could do whatever we wanted. Okay, so I, we'd go spend the I'd go spend the night at his place, which is in the same neighborhood as our school and my grandmother's house. So it was like I, I knew the neighborhood. Um, late at night, 
it's like 11 for a kid 11 12 at night we would get these ideas of like let's go do this thing so we'd leave the house nobody would care and we just walk around the neighborhood so one night we were like let's do let's do the shit in the bag thing because this is like right after billy madison came out mm. and That's that right. that all of a sudden was on our radar mm-hmm. so we were looking for paper bags and we couldn't find one we could only find a full-sized <laughs> a full-sized grocery paper bag <laughs> Oh no! And we couldn't. We started going around trying to find shit. We couldn't find enough because we wanted. To, we didn't just want one piece of shit and just you a giant to bag. Fill a bag. So we were trying to find a bunch of shit. Eventually, <laughs> we we leave. eat shit in the bag too. <laughs> oh no! So you made them stop on human. Shit. <laughs> I wish. Oh, no. I wish they stopped it out. No. We go, we're walking oh, no. around the back of, of dog and human shit, and we go a couple blocks over, we put it in the front the front step of this house, and we light it, and we knock on the door, and we run, but nobody goes, <laughs> nobody answers, oh, no. and the bag goes, <laughs> and we're like, ah! and we fucking ran. Nah. So we left Jesus. a raging inferno. I can only assume that they came outside eventually, but we didn't see anybody come out. Or and called we, the fire department. We fucking panicked. Oh, we were, I would we, too. we ran. We were shaking in his house. Like, we just, we're going to kill people. Because we that's thought what we were going to kill you, people with a bag of shit. That's what happens when you think you may have just committed a really An bad arson. crime. Yeah. That hurts somebody else. It, I, it's the worst feeling in the it's world. It's terrible. That's when you that's when you can know if you're really a bad person or not. Yeah. For sure. Whether or not that if, affects if that you. In your, if you if you did that and you were just like, good. Yeah. You, then no, there's a problem. No, with that we were person. we I, you know what? Maybe he was. <laughs> he was the bad I know influence. that I was I was I was like not a fan of what had happened. Uh but we also that same block a couple weeks later, he had these old stink bombs that were like expired. Like they had been, he had had them in his house for like a couple years, little glass ones. Mm -hmm. And we, one night, not too late at night, it was like six or seven in the evening. We go and we, uh, we put them on the driveway of this house that has no cars in the driveway Mm -hmm. and we just stomp them and then we run 30, 40 minutes later, we hear sirens and we're just like, What's going on? What's, what's going on? And we walk outside. We turn the corner. We look over, and there's fire trucks. There's cops. They thought there was a gas leak. Oh, every house, like within that block, they had to evacuate. <laughs> <laughs> While they assessed the situation, that's to, funny. To, to, <laughs> This doesn't hurt. Yeah, it harm like a, anybody. Like hurt, but it just really, it's just really their day up inconvenienced a little. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite kind of prank. The one that just sort of inconveniences throws people. people's game Not off a little terribly. bit. Yeah. Not terribly. Like, I don't. I don't. It's one thing to ruin somebody's whole day, but if you just sort of inconvenience people, it's my favorite thing to. Yeah, have but it happen. also like yeah, but that that also like that costs like city resources. And, like, well, okay, true. That that and from that angle, you know it's what? like they could have they been... were needed at an actual fire. Yeah, that would suck. If they were just sitting around waiting for something to happen, then okay, no harm, no foul. Yeah, we. I'm surprised we never got arrested. We almost. I'm sure I told you about the prank call to nine one one, right? You prank called nine one one. Yeah. When? S- same time, same oh. same kid. And this was uh, a couple months later. We had just started. Don't do any of this shit. No, yeah, no, this way, is everybody. all terrible. This is all terrible. Uh, we had just started seventh grade. This was a year before I moved to Jersey. 13 years old, 12 years old, about to turn 13. Mm -hmm. So we went to school. It's like a couple miles away, but there were no buses in California. Buses in Southern California aren't there to take you to and from school. They're there to take you on trips. Oh, so you either get dropped off at school or you walk to school. It's it's Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. So so on our walk home from school, me and the same friend. On our walk home from school, there was a convenience store that we used to go into, and I would steal sprites because they had that win a free sprite thing on the under the cap. So I would yeah. go, we would go and open the caps to see the free sprite one, oh and we go and hand them the cap with our hand over the open bottle. Mm-hmm. And just be like, thanks. That's 
That's smart. Clever. But there were a bunch of flat, open sprites in there. Free oh. the cooler. It, like, once again, I don't condone any of this. No, don't do this. But one day we go to this uh, convenience store, and my friend is like, let's call 911. I'm like, you're right. That's a good idea. <laughs> So uh, I pick up the phone and in a woman's voice, I just scream, help me. And then he goes, <laughs> give me the phone, bitch. And then smacks the phone against the wall and hangs it up. Oh, God. No. <laughs> and we oh. just walk away like <laughs> everything's OK. <laughs> that just that just made my day. couple of teenagers who were there. Mm. Cops go. Teenagers like it was them pointing down the street to the two little assholes walking towards the police station because it's also within our walking path. <laughs> they stop us and are like reading us the riot act, saying Jesus that we're we can go to jail, and if we don't want our parents called, we have to on our way walking home stop at the police station. And apologized to the dispatcher, which we had to do. Wow. We had to we had to walk into the police station. And what was the look uh, on that dispatcher's face? Oh, they were not happy. They it was a woman. I I I, re, I remember a woman dispatcher just looking at us, just like you little motherfuckers. Yeah, like fuck you. They they laid into us about how like if somebody were being hurt right now. Mm -hmm. and this cop had to respond to your fake call that's on you somebody could be dying right now and it's your fault yeah and we're and i'm just we're sitting there just like kind of frozen we're not crying or anything we're just sitting there just frozen like uh, uh, uh. and then we walk out start walking home and then we uncontrollably laugh because it was I mean, so it's... the nervousness yeah it, it was like a panic laugh and we were just like that was, that was that was insane like we almost got arrested and i think that might have been the last time i hung out with him it's probably for the best yeah that's a good time to stop hanging out with somebody when yeah but I, but not because my parents told me i think that was even me going like i think the guy uh, dial this back with yeah, this person it's, it's gone far enough right uh there's only one time I ever thought I was going to get arrested, but you know me like I grew up in a very yeah. conservative household. The idea of authority to me was like, you fucking obey mm. because it's just the way I was raised. I shortly after episode one came out and I had uh star Wars episode one. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you that aren't aware, it's when true, people yeah. say, when, when, when people our say generation one, yeah. references quote unquote episode one, Mm -hmm. It's usually in reference to Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. Go on. Yeah. So this would actually be... No, this is like a year later. Okay. This is, this is the year after. Um, this is it about was 99, it was 2000. 2000. It was 2000. Yeah. I remember because I was 16 at the time. And I... Oh, no. I was totally wrong on that. I just remembered a detail that actually it was 2001. And everybody was starting to get excited for episode two. That's why we were doing this. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Near where I, uh, near near where I lived growing up, we had the Manasquan Reservoir, which was the water supply for the area, and you know there was like a walking path. There's places you could go around there, but you couldn't actually go right up to the reservoir, yeah, because they didn't want people messing with it, because uh, everybody's drinking water. So this is I remember this was right after 9/11. This was less than a month after 9/11. So everybody is tense, mm -hmm. and my friend Ross, who was a huge Star Wars fan, and his friend. Parks, who was also a huge Star Wars fan, were like, we want to do the fight scene from episode one between Darth Maul and the duel of the fates. Uh, yeah, he, we want to do that. And we and we want a really good background. So we want to go up to the walkway right by the the reservoir with that in the background. And we want to do choreograph a fight. I was like, OK. Uh, I get there at five in the morning. They're like, where do you park? I don't know. We just parked on the side of the road in a very obvious we shouldn't be parking there type of area. <laughs> Parks shows up, his entire head painted black, his all the makeup done. His hair had been done into little nubs on top of his head. He ha he looked like Darth Maul with a mustache, with a beard. 
It was crazy. He went all out. He was really excited to do this. They had their their fake lightsabers. Uh, and we went up and I, we passed the thing. It says no trespassing. And I'm like, oh, guys, I, I don't think we should do that. And they're like, come on, because they're old. They're like 20. Yeah. And they're and I'm like, OK, well, I guess the older guys know what they're doing. And we walk up this huge hill. And there it is. We're right by Manasquan Reservoir. I still have some footage somewhere. The little bit we shot. And in the background, you see a little car start to pull up and they came up to us. And because it was shortly after 9-11, we were essentially yelled at and been like this. We have to treat this like it's a terrorist act. Yeah. We were brought into the parks department. This guy. <laughs> Him this dressed as Darth Maul. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so this guy, Ben something. I just I wish I remember his full name. This officer brings us down. He's like, all right, I am going to prosecute all of you. To the full extent of the law, he's talking about prosecuting me as an adult because I'm 17 at the time. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God. And it's 6 in the morning. My mother's not awake yet. And I know that when she wakes up, I'm going to have to tell her that, Mom, I'm being charged with terrorist acts. We were saved at the last second when the head of the Parks Department rolled up. And he's like, what's going on here? And the officer starts going, well, let me tell you. These guys, they did this, they did that, and we are going to prosecute them. We are going to court. And he goes, Ben, get the fuck out of here. I'm taking them down. And so we, he took us to the parks department like area. Yeah. Then told us we were all going to have to show up in court for this. And like they brought in person after person with, yes, him sitting there dressed as Darth Maul, having to just sort of take it. He had to look straight ahead. You could tell in his head he was just going, I am so humiliated right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so was the, did this seem like it might have just been them trying to scare you it guys? was okay just because a scare tactic of like i went and told my mom what happened i'm like look i have to go to court soon apparently and we're gonna hear about it we never did okay but that was the most scared i ever thought i was gonna be I, all right most scared i ever was thinking i was gonna be arrested that's as close as it got i guess as like me with the three nights of terror but we're not gonna talk about mm, that that's another day three nights of terror would be great to talk about one day mm, no why I mean, What's it's nothing. Statute to be... of limitations on like vandalism. <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't me. You were just there. I to... you were an accessory to I vandalism. Was. Uh, yes. Hang on. Statute <laughs> of limitations on. I still won't talk about everything we did because some of it was downright rotten. I probably haven't heard everything. No, I think I think we've over the years. I think we've told you everything. Uh, vandalism. In New Jersey, the statute of limitations for a disorderly person's offense, that's what came up, is one year. The statute of limitations for indictable crimes is five years. Oh, we're well past that. All right. So the three <laughs> nights ago. No, no you know right. what? Save that. Save that for another day, because that's a, that's a whole podcast. I Yeah. It do, well, you Property know, I was going to say, I, I don't know if I'd want to, because some of it, I don't want to look like a complete shithead. But then I think about it. I'm like, I don't. I don't look like a complete shithead, because I literally just sat there with a camera just going like. What the fuck? That was my entire role in that thing until I threw an egg. <laughs> there was some egging involved, which, all right, it sounds silly. That's really saying dumb, it. childish vandalism stuff. But that was the end of the, that's what got us in trouble. That's, yeah. That, that's the a whole stuff other beforehand, story. The, the two nights prior. <laughs> we need to run through. I, I, basically, I want to just sit there. Should and we just get Kurt and Brian and no. sit, us, sit us down and be like, guys, Recap what you can. No, <laughs> not no, no. <laughs> Especially, and you'd think for I'd say podcast? Brian, but, I, but I'd actually say for Kurt, no. I don't. I I bet he'd be like. I think he's just like a regular guy now. He just looks like a sh like just some regular schlub hanging out. I saw. I told you I saw I him like, when I first moved back here. I feel here. like if we started talking to him, he'd be back. He'd start repeating the same stuff after like ten minutes, probably. Because I think he he really messed his his brain up a lot. I'm sure he did, and I feel like it wouldn't be worth having. You can see. I so, hate to reignite the old him. I feel like he. We're would, talking about a friend of uh, an old friend of Russ's, who uh, you you guys went to school with him, right? No, no. Brian went to school with him, and I was always over at Brian's house okay. as a kid, and and that's just. And he was a he was a maniac. He's he's he was a problem. Yeah, yeah. He's a maniac. So when I was first, when He's I first anymore. this was years ago yeah. when I first moved back to Jersey a year and a half two years ago two years ago now mm -hmm. um, first thing I had to do I had to go to Comcast to drop off 
I had brought my modem from Texas because they didn't tell me. I thought I could bring it and have my tr- my service transferred and right. blah, blah, blah. Turns out I couldn't and I had to go return it. So I had to go to the Comcast building uh, a couple towns over. And this is within a week of being here. The first person I see coming to New Jersey is Kurt <laughs> walking in right before me. And I, and I was with our buddy Wayne. And I'm like, I think I know him. And I said, and I, the way you could see the way he stands, mm-hmm. just his his posture, his body language, that he's like slightly off. Yeah, that there's something which has always sort of been the case. But like, I'm gonna stand it's up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand up real quick and show you how he's standing. Well, here, you know what? I'm gonna get counter. Here, we throw some footage into this. Here we go. Um, so up at the front of the store. He's waiting to talk to somebody. I think he had just talked to the customer service lady there, and she was going in the back. And the way he was standing there was just like this. Here, I'll, I'll stand. And there's something about this posture. When you see somebody spread leg a little bit, chest bucked up, gut out, ass tucked up, and head down. Yeah. He was also wearing like high, really like crummy, like white socks he, from the eighties. He always did. Yeah, I never thought about that. Like, car, like khaki cargo shorts, and just like a Walmart T-shirt, and just that stance. The which is how he, yeah, that's his, that's his vibe. There's something about that that was. There's something about that that was just really like. There's that part of your head that's like, that's a person I know. I haven't been in New Jersey. Should I say hi? No. 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 There was a time when when it was me, Brian, and Kurt for a couple years in a row where we spent all our free time together. Kurt was hilarious at the time. Like, he was just crazy. He would say stuff that was outlandish. You couldn't believe it at that age. Nowadays, it probably wouldn't be as shocking. But at the time... uh, to be fair, nothing shocks me anymore because I went from Brian to Kurt to you. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> literally, not that that like saying people who whose entire sense of humor revolves around just saying messed up things get no reaction from me. Not because I have a problem with it, but because I've been around yeah. you too many people like that my whole life. So like, it, I get. Either way, I'm I digressing. I feel like I tried to say well, messed no, up you, things. No, you mine to. was organic. You're not really. Anywhere. I feel like even back then, I felt like it was more organic yeah, than that. But you then. still said it enough that I still true. I have yeah, no reaction. No, I, I had less of a filter. Right. And I just, yeah. And I still think it's funny, but in my head, I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, uh, we spent years together. And then that's about when all the drug problems started to come up with the two of them. Yeah. But Kurt uh, uh, could get very heavily into cocaine. Um, and when he was doing that, we didn't see him as much anymore, but I do remember, uh, sometimes you just see him walking the neighborhood and you, and you'd be like, should I say, no, no, he looks like something's off. Didn't, didn't something happen? And that's what we used as the basis for our video. Yeah. Uh, that's right. We put it in the Brian video, but it was actually Kurt that did it where (laughs) Brian's stepmom was outside and he was walking <laughs> he was walking by and he was down by like the mailbox and she's up at the house so he's like you know, 25 feet away she just goes like she sees kurt who has been at her house almost nonstop at this point for oh, like 10 years well i mean okay maybe not as much recently but still like she saw this guy grew up <laughs> or grow up and she's like oh hi kurt he looks up sees her Goes wide-eyed, says nothing, turns around and sprints away like he's running away from her. And she was just like, uh, okay. And immediately came and told us. She's like, I saw Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he was something. Uh, oh, man. But, but then I think he, he, I don't think he's a cokehead anymore, thankfully. I think no, has, no. You. I think he's just. Just drinks, goes to the bar a lot. That's what he looked like. He looked like he looked like he's probably just spends his nights on a bottle. Yeah, he goes to Applebee's, sits at the bar. I think I saw him there once. I've seen him there so many times. Anytime I'm there, almost he's almost always there. Just a regular. 
I bet there's people who wonder about him who work there. Who are like, what's his story? Like, yeah, you if only wanna, they do. You don't want to know. <laughs> he, you know what he used to say was his dream job. Oh yeah, a uh, politician. Yep, he yeah. wanted to get he into politics. To... I yeah, which seemed crazy at the time. Seems even more unrealistic. But even now. still, like, but I wish I remember had. back then. Like, I remember that he was relatively smart. He was yeah. very. Smart. He was he was a smart guy, which was which was it wasn't like he, he was this stuff, fucking politics weirdo was. junkie. Yeah, no, who like who you would you wouldn't give the time of day. He was a, he was a smart, clever person mm-hmm. who also happened to be completely unhinged. Yeah. He and got more unhinged as time went on. Like, yeah, early. There's obviously there's obviously a broken part of his brain. Yeah. That became more fractured as he got older. Something bad happened around the time to his brain. I mean, around the time when he started doing the coke because oh, he I'm started sure. he started going too far, like to the point where you're like, stop, you're going to get us in trouble. Yeah. Uh, which I guess could explain some of the things that uh, he did that night that we were talking about before. No, that, that wasn't just him. That I was, mean, that was, Brian, the, that was Brian. The fucking both of them. Well, Brian, to had be fair, issues. in my defense, I was throwing ideas out too. I'm not a completely innocent. Hey, I never did a whole lot of bad stuff, but I sure encouraged it and said like yeah. ideas that people ran with back in the day. Yeah. So I, I it's just being young. You know, you, I see. Some I, stuff I, you still don't, I don't know if I want to talk about the three. That's <laughs> People are gonna want to know now. Some of it is some of it makes me feel uncomfortable now, which says a lot. I don't typically feel uncomfortable. I'm pretty okay with most things. Okay. So for me to feel uncomfortable talking about something, yeah. It's not great. Well, you know what? We'll see what the reaction is to this. Jib has arrived, so we are going to go uh we're gonna shoot some stuff All for right. the channel. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We definitely didn't expect this. These things will probably continue to be impromptu for now until we uh, get on a more regular schedule and can do things like this on a regular basis. Yeah, but uh, enjoy living in the Matrix. Yeah. And uh, if you see a crystal structure in the ocean, let us know. Tell us the stuff you're not proud of as be- from a kid. And that, too. Also. It's kind all right. of went all over the place. Uh, yeah, tell us all the- There's so much to talk about. Uh, we'll see you for one of these again in the future. For now, go enjoy the rest of the channel. Goodbye. Bye.